rendering in Rhino and this is kind of just a beginner kind of introduction video that'll show you how to render. Uh, keep in mind that Rhino has this free rendering program that's built in. It's not the best uh, rendering program but um, it is pretty good for what Rhino has to offer. Rhino also has a lot of third-party uh, rendering programs. You have programs like V-Ray and Maxwell and those are plugins so they can be used in Rhino itself. Now, if you want to use Rhino Render, uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to this Render tab and you want to make sure that your current renderer is Rhino Render. If you have V-Ray or Maxwell, you will see multiple render options. Make sure to select Rhino Render. So for the first part of this assignment, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually set up the render. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure you copy and paste your model and you want to bring it to this other location. The next thing that you want to do is you want to create different sets of layers where you actually have those each materials. So you have a layer for roof, you have a layer for this wooden wall, uh, you have a layer for glass, metal, concrete, grass, um, anything else like a white painted wood, uh, etc. So make sure you have all of these layers. Um, it'll just help in terms of quickly adding materials. If you have a more organized layer list, then you can just copy and paste those materials. Um, but just for the sake of this video, I think that this will be a lot easier. So make sure you have that. The next thing that you want to do is if you need any specific materials, uh, make sure that you actually go to Google and you actually find that material. So let's say we type in a uh, brick texture. So that way you actually find the brick texture map and you would save this uh, to a specific location. So make sure you do that for all of the textures that you want. So once you do that, you'll find the right view that you want um, and we're actually going to save this view. So let's actually zoom in and find um, a view that I think will be nice. Um, I think this view will be good. And the reason why all of these colors look different is because when I go to this color option, I actually changed my color. So that way I could actually have it um, just organized for the sake of um, the rendering option. So go to a view that you uh, like. Um, I think that this view seems to be a good view. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to this perspective pull down. We're going to go to set view. We're going to go to named views and we're going to create a new view and I'm going to call this as render view one. Okay. So now this is saved as render view one. So no matter where you go, uh, you can actually go back to uh, render view one. So that way you don't lose that specific view. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our natural lighting and our sun settings. So if you go to the top tabs, you'll find the rendering tab. On that rendering tab, you'll see a sun option and you'll also see a lights panel. Click on the lights panel. You have two lighting options. You have your skylight and your sun. I recommend for this, um, you actually go to render view. It'll help you kind of understand how it works. So if you do skylight, it's almost like uh, being placed inside a small dome. Um, we recommend using sun. So let's go to our sun settings. Uh, what we're going to do is the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our location. Now either you can actually go and find your location in this map, which will actually have Atlanta, I think, saved, or you can just type here. This will automatically find uh, your current location, which is Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Now make sure you change your time. Um, recommend you can choose a different month, for example, March, April. Let's do, uh, let's do mid-April. And let's set our timing to uh, about 11, I would say, 10, 11, uh, 11, 48 a.m. And you can, of course, pick a specific time. Everything looks okay. All right. So now that this is done, um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to start to manipulate our render settings. So right click on this to go to render settings. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our resolution to a higher resolution. I recommend somewhere around 1920 by 1080. That's a good resolution to work with. Change our DPI from somewhere between 150 to 300. Um, if your computer can handle 300, then that, you know I'd recommend that. Change your anti-aliasing to high, which is a it's a high processing speed. 
um, so it's going to start to process that render faster. And for the background, either choose a solid color that's maybe like a light blue, or even better would be a gradient. Um, so you can have like a uh, like a natural blue that would just fade into maybe like a lighter kind of white or something. Um, so I think that is good. Um, and everything seems to be okay. All right, so you'll start to see that. So that's a pretty nice uh, render. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start to um, set up our materials. So for example, if we're doing the wood wall, we're gonna start with this one. We're gonna go to this circle, which is a material tab, and we're gonna pick a color that is appropriate um, for wood. So let's say we pick like a, like a brown, like a light brown. So this is like a wooden cladded wall. So once we actually pick the color, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our bump. A bump is pretty much uh, like a texture. So I saved those textures that we found on Google and I saved it to a folder called textures. So I'm just going to import that material in so you can see that it changed. And now what I want to do is if you look at um, each of these wooden planks is almost eight feet wide. Um, that's not realistic. So we're actually going to have to modify this. So if you go to the settings, go to the bump. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually change the mapping. Now, Rhino is not the best program in terms of materials just because it struggles with it. So you'll have to kind of play around with the materials and find out the proper mapping that will work the best. Uh, I think a screen uh, would be the best option as well for our specific wall. So I think five is a good one. So let's click OK. So you can see automatically the wood cladding became a little bit nicer. You start to have like smaller kind of panels, uh, which is kind of what we want out of this render. Other programs like Maxwell, um, those are a lot better in terms of uh, how they kind of work. Um, they work a lot more effectively. Let's do 5.5, because I think it would just be better for it to be smaller. So that looks pretty good. Um, so the next thing that we're gonna do is now that we have that, we're gonna continue setting up the rest of our materials. So we're gonna go to glass, we're gonna pick a blue material, um, just to show kind of like that glass. For transparency, we're actually gonna increase our transparency because we want the glass to be transparent. For metal, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go to like a gray material, um, a black or a gray material. Maybe a slight gloss finish. Um, yeah, okay. So that's done. For white wood, we would just have, you know, just a simple white door, uh, maybe like a grayish door. For concrete, uh, we can just have, you know, a nice simple gray concrete. Um, okay. And then for grass, uh, we're gonna go ahead and add the grass. So we'll choose a green. And we'll just leave like a nice olive green. I think that would be best. Uh, let's press OK. And for the grass, I'm actually gonna go and use a texture that I had saved. So I'm actually gonna load this, um, this grass texture, which I actually had saved. Um, so this grass texture. And I'm gonna change the mapping. And because our topography is much larger, I made the repeat uh, to about 50 offset 10 10 so I think that's good and we can leave it on mapping channel okay okay so uh, it's looking like this um, let me just and make sure we turn that on okay so that's how the grass looks um, so I think everything is good um, the next thing that we can do is we can actually go ahead and render this I think you know we're pretty much ready so let's render it real quick so we're gonna go to our render window which is right here and we're gonna render it and this dialog will come up and it will start to render it for you and it might take a little bit of time. So once the rendering is done, um, it's gonna look like this. Um, it isn't super detailed, but it's still you know not bad for the render that they give us. You can obviously edit it uh, with post effects, so you can add things like uh, fog, uh, depth of field. You can also edit the exposure, um, so gamma correction and stuff like that. So make sure you actually save that image. Um, so let's say we save it as um, a render view two and then you can actually check it out. So that's how it turned out. And of course you can take it into Photoshop and start to edit it and make it look different. But that's gonna be it for this part of the video. Um, in the next video, we'll start to cover how to edit it in Photoshop, start to add things like people, uh, vehicles, um, and kind of start to modify things to make it look better. Uh, but that's gonna be it for this video.